Good morning, evening, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Wynne, and we are continuing on in Tibet in European Universalis 4. Where we last left off, we just finished recovering from the war that we had with Ming. As you can see, Ming actually have quite a bit of a rebel problem, so their... their, um... what's it called? Their civil war is still going on strong. Now might have actually been the time in order to go and attack them, and if we maybe stayed in that war for a little bit longer, maybe then we would have had more of a chance. Let's take a look. Total, yeah, Tibet and Japan, we're up here. And Ming are down there with only 27,000. But they are still at Tech 14, while we are still only at Tech 12. So what do we need to do to alleviate that? We need to westernize as soon as possible. And the quickest way for that to happen is maybe going through Marwar. However, going through Marwar is going to be a little bit of a problem in itself. Not only do we have to go to war with them, but we also need to core these provinces. And Spain also needs to have their own core here, which they do. They have Rajkot as one of their cores. But we need to make Marwar here a core. So what we could do alternatively is we could go and declare war on Marwar and vassalize them. Either that, or we can wait for Spain to come to us, which I think is probably the better idea. The final thing we could most likely do is colonize somewhere else. So for instance, we could colonize down here in... I don't even know where this is. Is this still Indonesia? Yes, it is still in Indonesia, the East Asian trade port. Why is the East Asian trade port so... This apparently is in the East Asian cot? What the... What? I have no idea what some of these um, regions are. East Asian cot? What's that about? Trade port? This one is in the trade port and the cot, but... And that's also in the cot. What is... Why is this all the way over everywhere, and why is Kyoto part of it as well? This is not really making much sense. At any rate though, let us unpause. And I was taking a look at... Okay, Pegu's left the coalition. Let's turn the speed down to speed 2. This is something I haven't done for pretty much the entirety of the Let's Play. And that's saying something considering we are on episode 26 of the Let's Play already. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at some of our missions. We can either spread our culture, or don't really want to do that. The rival of the threat, now that's a bit interesting. Or protect our brethren in Longzhou. Now that, that requires us to go to war with Ming again. And I kind of don't want to go to war with Ming again. Let's see, how are they doing with their rebels? They are seriously taking a beating. They're losing sieges left, right and center. They're losing provinces left, right and center, should I say. And maybe we could go and attack Atse. No, Atse are actually a protectorate of Spain. They are still currently in the Chinese tech group, but they might be able to westernize. In fact, are you westernizing? No, it doesn't look like you are. I wonder if you can still westernize if you're a protectorate underneath another country. But the fact that Adse themselves are a protectorate and they're in the Chinese tech group, that means Spain can potentially protectorate us. And we don't want that to happen. Why is that? Because I don't like the idea of being a subject underneath somebody else. That's just a no-go for the proud people of Tibet. Now, I'm not saying that Atse aren't proud people, they just found themselves in an unfortunate situation when it comes to Spain invading them. So what are we going to be doing now? We're just really going to wait. I mean, I really wish I could send my colonist elsewhere. Let's check, colonial range. Hello, show me my colonial range. Um, fortification effort. Permanent matter of regal attention, fortifications always received great care. Such capitals, major, major shipyards, whatever. Um, okay, let's lose a prestige, we need to gain that back anyway. So, we can't really colonize anywhere. I mean, the next closest place would probably be this island down here, or these islands down here called the Maldives. But, they are just barely out of the way. We need to be able to get a guy that increases our 
um, what do you call it? Our colonial uh, colonial range, and we unfortunately have none. Now, in other terms, what we can do is we could also just wait and save up some money, which might not be a bad idea. But I would like to go and improve relations with Japan. Improve relations, okay. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but between episodes I did send a guy over to Sukhothai, I believe, to annex Vassal. Yes, he's been doing it for 1700 days, wow. I wonder who's actually keeping track of that. I wonder if he's just standing there going... <laughs> just imagine, like, you know, in the prisons when they use chalk and they draw lines and then every fifth stroke is like a diagonal line through the previous four. I just imagine he has a giant portable wall of something like that and he just scribbles one line down every time a day passes. It's got to be a pretty big wall, I'll imagine that. At any rate, lose another piece of prestige, sure, why not? Oh, and did something happen over here? Something flashed up over here. I don't know, I only just saw the light up. Maybe it was just because my allied ship over here was in this province, so we could therefore see what's going on there. And there was nothing of importance going on there, so that doesn't really matter. Now we could also always um, make core Aowardi. I'll make Aowardi a core. This will actually decrease our overextension, I believe. Yeah, we're at 12 overextension. And I think this also improves the rate at which we begin... I'm um, sorry, it also improves the rate at which we integrate people. So let's see, Ming have accepted peace with Zhou. Zhou is spawned. Wow, hello Zhou. How are you doing? You're at military 3. Zhou, you are at military tech 3. You are going nowhere. At all. You could have decided to spawn, you know, like, I don't know, a bit bigger than you currently are. I mean, sure, you have a decent amount of land, but take a look at this. One of your provinces isn't even connected, so therefore this province here is likely to get revolts. You're probably likely to rival Ming. You've rivaled Khmer. Okay. Well, Ming probably won't like you either. I don't know, we'll see how this relationship between Zhou and Ming fan out. So are we improving relations in Japan? We are currently improving relations in Japan. We have a missionary in Lower Dobe, who has... who is never going to finish converting Lower Dobe, so let us pull him back. Let's see. Yep, monthly progress of 0.0%, so let's call him back. Okay, and we again can't convert anything. Which sucks. I know I am getting a little bit impatient, but I really do want to start westernizing. That way I can show you guys what westernizing is about. And it'll also be beneficial for us as Tibet. Now the other thing that is probably bad about westernization is as soon as we westernize, we could expect to see people like, I don't know, the Oirat Horde start to westernize. Now, I would quite like to see a westernized Oirat Horde, mind you. But, I'm not sure if Ming can westernize. I know they have, they keep up fairly well with their technology. And I know you need to be a certain amount of tech points behind the country that you're westernizing off of in order to actually begin the process. Let's see, what is going on in Ming? Manchu ref refuses the merchants of Ming. And Ming refuses the merchant of the Oirat Horde. So that's interesting, so Ming basically just kicked out all the merchants from, say, the Beijing, the Hongzhou, and the Canton trade node. Golden Age for Era. Oh hey, we get, we gain, we gain back the prestige that we lost in the previous two events, and then we gain another, another three. That's always great. Sadly, oh okay, we've lost a royal marriage with one of our dudes, so let's go and get that back. We have got a new advisor, he is a statesman. That is actually quite beneficial for us. Now why do I say that? Because diplomat diplomatic reputation will increase the rate at which annexation happens. And let's see what Spain are up to. They are attacking the Ottomans, Tunisia, Yemen, Kilwa and Crimea. So it doesn't look like they're proceeding to 
Oh, what? Spain is allied with Malwa? That is a bit freaky. Can we get an alliance with Spain? No. Number of great power allies with Spain. That normally only pops up if we're considered a great power. Are we considered a great power? Yep, there we go. Take a look at the bottom modifier. Competing great power. So Tibet finally is a great power. That is amazing. And we can now invest in a new idea. What is this? Global settler increase. You know that... Hmm. It'd be nice. But what about our diplomatic tech? Ooh, if we save up diplomatic tech, we can then gain colonial range. Which would be huge for us. So I think it would be worth it to save the extra... To wait for the extra, like, 300, nearly 400 diplomatic points to come in. I think that would be fine. So let's go and take a look at over at the rest of Europe. Russia still being Russia, still growing. And um, pushing Uzbek back. And Nogai probably. They're probably also going to gobble up Kazan eventually. Crimea is a little split between Russia and Lithuania. And Lithuania are still doing really well for themselves. Although they could be doing better without that war with Sweden, Great Britain, Newfoundland and the Palatinate. And I believe the Palatinate is still the Emperor. No, that is... who are you? Brandenburg. Okay, Brandenburg is the Emperor right now. Man, I can't keep up with all of these Emperor changes. I mean, normally it's Austria, and if it's not Austria, then it's probably Bavaria. But instead it's Brandenburg, the Palatinate, and I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Hansa become the Emperor either. In fact, let's see who they're voting for. Brandenburg, Brandenburg, Bavaria, Sweden. The Palatinate is voting for Sweden to become the Emperor. That would be a scary, scary day. Okay, we have lost a couple of royal marriages, so let's um, get those back up. Fortunately, they sent us the messages. Elsewhere in Europe, the Teutonic Order is still doing pretty well for themselves. They're basically destroying the remnants of Poland. And this is probably going to force Poland to become either a vassal of Lithuania, the Teutons, or Hungary eventually. The Ottomans have actually taken over Wallachia, who historically were never actually conquered. It looked like in the Balkans, Venice and Serbia are still the only powers there, but unfortunately they're basically sandwiched between two much bigger powers of Hungary and Ottomans. In fact, let's take a look at Hungary's military strength. We have greater army size than Hungary, but I'm pretty sure Hungary has better tech than we do. Yeah, they have tech 15, we are still only at tech 12. That message just popped up and said that we have lost a claim on somewhere. And take a Ooh. We've successfully integrated Sukhothai. And we've got the Revolutionary War against Ayat Haya. And we've lost the trade dispute against Malwa. Wow, take a look at the size of Malwa. What just happened there? Last time I checked, there was a huge... What just happened? Did you just completely annex Malwa? That's insane. Wow, I am a bit shocked by that actually. And it also looked like the Oirat Horde decided to go and attack Chagatai, I think. Now, who do you have a peace with? Nobody. You're allied with Tibet and Hindustan. You know, you could really do without that alliance with Hindustan. I'm pretty sure they're not going to help you. Although they might be of assistance against Malwa, but I'll be even better of an assistance. I happen to be a player-controlled character, or country, instead of a computer-controlled country. You don't want to be allied with these NPC scum. I mean, come on. I at least have brains. I don't follow a set of algorithms or anything. But sadly, neither do you, and that is probably why you will not listen to me, Oirat Horde. Fine. I see how it is. This is actually discrimination. At any rate, over here in Great Britain, Great Britain are hostile to us. Probably because they, yep, they still have the mission to get a foothold in the Indian trade. They are currently fighting Lithuania, Pomerania, Denmark. Okay, I was about to say nobody too big. 
Although Lithuania itself is quite big, and Denmark is as well. But they seem to be winning this battle. Let's see, what is this? The Swedish conquest of Riga. So Sweden attacked Lithuania, and Great Britain got called into it. So there's that. Ireland, you still have your... Yep, you still have your alliance with France. France, who are you allied with? It's easier to check on this screen. Oops, didn't mean to nearly knock over that cup on my desk. You are allied with Denmark, Hungary, Ireland, and Baden. I don't know where Baden is, or Baden. I don't know how to pronounce some of these countries. In fact, probably like 70 to 100% of the countries I have no idea how to pronounce. Like Persia. I mean, I really can't pronounce Persia right, can I? Is it Persia or Persia? At any rate. I am actually feeling a little bit silly at the moment, so do expect this kind of commentary from me. So Ming gains a claim on Calm. Okay. Herald from Japan, we've improved relation. Great. Recall him. So since we have annexed our vassal, we might want to... Oh yeah, we can easily go and annex Ayat Hire again. Not again, otherwise they wouldn't be here already. But let's take a look, see where else we can spread out to. Um... Okay, we have lost our royal marriage with our other vassal, so let's do that. We might as well just go and annex Delhi. I mean, they don't have too many cores nearby anymore. We could go and attack Congra for all, a war. And we could also attack Malwa. They are a sultanate, so we do have a CB against them. We can call for a revolutionary war. And the Oirat Horde will actually join in this battle. Malwa, who else are you allied with? Nobody. Hmm. How long is this core in Malwa going to be... Okay, Delhi will never lose Central Dobe as a core province. This? Ooh! This is Central Dobe. This is that very high base tax province. That is great. Delhi, you are currently Buddhist. So... Uh, but I'm not certain if he'll be able to convert Central Dope. He can't convert Upper Dope. So there's always that as a problem. I really do wish we went in to religious ideas instead of... Um, what did we go for? I believe we went for... Econ no, not economic expansion. Or... Man, why do I always forget where these icons are? Oh, it's just on it. Expansion is what we went for. It's not like the next idea in the expansion group is going to help us if we can't actually reach any of the islands that we so desire. We have a royal marriage offer from Zo. Hmm. Is this going to be worthwhile? Let's see, Zo, can I vassalize you? No, not nearly. Minus 131. I'm pretty sure we can't get to positive 132. Hmm, should we go for a royal marriage? Sure, why not? I mean, it's not like we lose anything. So as for Spain's presence down here in India, I wonder what they're going to do about this. I mean, I'm pretty sure eventually they're going to want to attack Malwa. They haven't even got them as a rival yet. I mean, Hindustan hate them, the Aztec hate them, Austria hates them, and France hates them. <gasps> Look at that glorious button! Look at it! That is... Oh my god! Usa, have you westernized? No. Who have I boarded that has westernized? Malwa. Dang. Dang it! Malwa is now western. That sucks. But we at least can westernize. So, westernization will reduce our stability by 3, and also change our tech group to western. We will then slowly westernize and our progress will depend on our monarch power. Each month up to 10 monarch power will be drawn from each category. When the progress is finished, which will require 3200 power in total, we will have access to western units. So, each tech group has different units. For instance, we, you have the Chinese unit tech group, and that gives us these dudes. Now the best tech group for, um, stat um, statistically, is the Western tech group. So we are definitely going to want to click this button. Unfortunately, take a look at the effects. 
Advisor cost plus 50, and National Revolterist plus 5. Now, in order to avoid the Advisor costs, we might want to... Although, we probably can't. Oh man, there is a Colonial Range guy right here. We could hire him temporarily in order to get our guy over to the Maldives down here. That could be a good idea. Hold on, what is our Colonial Range? He increases it by, like... What is that? 20 over 100? That's 2 over 10. That's... He increases it by a fifth. Maldives is 178 distance away. So what is a fifth of 160? In fact, I happen to have a calculator right here next to my desk. 160 multiplied by 1 over 5. 32! So that'll, that'll increase it to... 190 odd. So yeah, we... If we get this guy, we could increase our... We could increase our colonial range in order to colonize the Maldives. But why would we do that when we could go and... because we can't. Actually, we could go and colonize Sunda. Could we colonize Banten? No, unfortunately not. So we could either colonize Sunda here, or we could go for the Maldives. Travel time 75 days, settle a chance 12%. Travel time 110 days, settler chance 1%. The natives are pretty aggressive there. But they're even more aggressive over here, and they're more ferocious. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to detach... Uh, no. We're about to westernize, aren't we? Hmm. I have no idea how we're going to do this. This all originally started because I wanted to try and find somebody who... Uh, a um, guy, a, an advisor, who will reduce the revolt risk, but no. Then I saw this colonial range guy, then I went onto a tangent about if we could colonize places. But I do think maybe it's a good idea. No, let's focus on one thing at a time first, but oh man, but if I leave it, we might not be able to colonize. And that'll mean that this whole idea is worthless. Hmm. What would we get out of colonization? We could go and colonize eventually down here in Madagascar if we could reach it. You know what? I'm just going to go through this. Enough thinking about it is making my brain hurt. Let's go for colonial range. Yes. Send a dude over to the Maldives. Okay. Maldives or Sunda. You know what? I know you really shouldn't do this in a grand strategy game, but here I have a coin, and you have to trust me on this. Heads, I pick Cinder. Tails, I pick the Maldives. Okay, it came up with Tails, Maldives, so I am picking Cinder. The coin tells me what not to do. So, there we go, send a guy to Cinder. And then let us, is this my transports? This is my transports. Let's attach any amount of men to there, and then send our ship down to Cinder. And we have a new advisor, provides yearly prestige. Okay, and now we are probably going to want to begin westernization. Yes. We have lost stability. Okay, I understand that we have lost stability. But now look at that. We can now improve our military tech. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. We can improve our diplo tech. This is just amazing. Wow. Okay. We have started our westernization effort. Under our enlightened leadership, our proud nation has begun its march towards modernity. The reactionary element within our realm will doubtless attempt to impede our progress, but they must be made to see that the time for great change is upon us. We have now gained a whole bunch of new infantrymen. So let us go and get them. Let's say Asian Aqua Bruiser. Reformed, okay, we can't change our cavalry. And Chambered Demi Cannon. That just sounds so amazing. Chambered Demi Cannon. That's like a gravity cannon, right? In Final Fantasy terms. So let me boost the stability up so that we have a positive value. Oh, and in fact, we can begin doing this. Now, you might be wondering, why did I increase it all the way to 3? Well, it reduces the revolt risk. 
I mean, look at this. We're westernizing and we only have revolts possible in Old. In fact, why don't I split these guys and send half of them over to Old? There we go. We are also losing quite a bit of money. That's probably because we have that stupid advisor who will cost us a whole bunch of money. But, as soon as our advisor gets here, I think we might be able to um, dismiss him. The great man has died, the master of mint. Okay, that's probably going to save us a bit of money. There we go, okay, how long until you get here? 16 days. Well, we'll wait for this to happen and then we'll send our ships down to Cinder. And the glorious white colour of Tibet spreads even more. Thank you for joining me in this episode, I hope you have enjoyed yourself. I know I have enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Take care.